Hello and welcome to two years of me writing my neuroscience thesis. Putting two years of effort into a project and condensing it into a 15 minute YouTube video isn't easy, but here's my best attempt. If you've been following me on TikTok, you know that in May, I finished and presented my thesis in neuroscience and behavior at Barnard College of Columbia University. I feel so blessed that this whole process was almost entirely fun for me because I absolutely adore scientific writing, and I learned so many invaluable skills along the way. This process was two years in the making. I read 238 studies and consumed 419 cups of coffee while writing this thesis. I wouldn't have been able to do it without the many baristas that helped me stay energized for the entire year while I was writing. So without further ado, here's how I wrote a thesis in neuroscience from start to finish. Our story begins in December of 2022 when I interviewed for the research assistant position at the Devachi lab. This was the lab where I would work for the next year and a half doing research for my thesis. We're a memory lab, and we collected a ton of data in spring of 2021 at the tail end of the pandemic to determine the relationship between isolation and memory. From the beginning of working in this lab and becoming familiar with the work we were doing, I knew I wanted to write my thesis about something related to memory and depression. I'm very open about the fact that I have bipolar disorder and have been experiencing depressive episodes since I was 11 years old, so I really wanted to investigate something that was personal and important to me. Luckily, our lab collected effective data as well as data about memory and isolation. So I was in a perfect position to formulate a question that involved these three variables. I thought about possible research questions for months. I spent all summer working with our data and learning the ins and outs of our studio, a coding language used in the neuroscience field to clean and visualize data. That brings us to fall of 2023, almost nine months after I started working for the Devachi lab. I was finally enrolled in my thesis writing seminar and it was time to start researching for real. I spent countless hours in the library doing a literature review to see what scientists had found out about these three variables already. Nothing like entering the library when it's light outside and then leaving when it's dark. <laughs> Love it! I highly recommend using Notion when you conduct a literature review because you can create spreadsheets with labels and color coding. It's super helpful to sort out what studies support what parts of your research. By the end of September, I had a research question. Is isolation related to memory deficits and depressive symptoms? Throughout this whole literature review process, I became very familiar with cafes all across Manhattan, where I'd sit for hours reading study after study. Finally, it was time to take everything I'd learned and write an introduction section. The introduction section of a scientific paper, well, introduces everything that the reader needs to know about the subject to understand your research. In my case, I had to provide background information, context, and statistics about COVID-19, depression, and autobiographical memory. Scientific writing is one of the few things that I feel confident enough to say I'm very good at, so I actually cranked out the entire introduction section in one sitting at this plant cafe in the Lower East Side. I turned it in a few days later, received great feedback from the professor, and made the edits he suggested. I found myself at another nice cafe and stayed there all day adding more clarifying information to make sure I didn't leave anything important out of my introduction. This required reading even more studies. I feel privileged to have a laptop and an iPad, so I would read the studies on my iPad and write the introduction on my laptop next to it. It made things so much more efficient, so if you're able to do this, I highly recommend it. I continued to edit this introduction draft for the next month and was always reading more studies to make sure I had a comprehensive idea of the field I was gonna be adding to with my thesis. In November, it was finally time for the next step of my thesis, beginning to prepare a TED Talk. I have a fear of public speaking, so this was really scary for me. But the good thing about being so passionate about a subject is that it distracts you from your anxiety when you talk about it. 
I created Google Slides all about my personal experience with depression, the results of my literature review, and what I predicted the results of our research in the lab would be. I practiced so many times to my dog, to my parents, to myself, and then it was finally time to present it. I was so nervous, but it went absolutely fine. My bosses from the lab attended, as did my thesis professor and all the other students who were writing a thesis. This was me, very excited that it went well. After that ended, I felt a huge weight off my chest because I wouldn't have to give another anxiety-inducing presentation until May. But then it was off to the races because my abstract and method sections were due soon. After working on this project in the lab for a year, writing the method section was pretty self-explanatory. I outlined how the project had functioned from start to finish, defined the demographic and recruitment of participants, and the independent, dependent, and confounding variables. Like with the introduction section, I really just needed to sit down for a day and write. I did my method section in one sitting and sent it off to my professor and bosses for review. Writing the abstract was much harder, especially since I was being asked to write it before I had any conclusive data. For my initial abstract, I wrote the hypothesized results for my thesis. It was December when I finalized the method section, abstract, and introduction and submitted them for real. February was when the real work began. Thus far, I had only been writing the various parts of my thesis. Now, it was time to do the actual statistical analysis and coding that was required to get the actual results. This was where all my hard work over the summer of 2023 paid off. I had spent all summer learning how to code in RStudio, and now I could finally use that knowledge to take the raw data that we'd collected over the last year and analyze it. I imported the databases into RStudio, cleaned the data, and used various statistical analysis to get multiple linear regression models of the data. I was kind of disappointed when the linear model didn't reveal any relationship between the three variables, but when I visualized the data into graphs, I noticed that there was potentially some kind of relationship that wasn't coming through in the numbers. So I ran individual correlations for all of the possible relationships, and voila, I found a significant correlation between the variables of isolation and memory. At this point, time was moving super quickly. I had entered a new semester, done midterms, and now finals were coming up. Before I knew it, it was April and my final thesis was about to be due. I took the results that I'd coded and wrote up a results section about them. This was probably the hardest part of writing the thesis because there's a specific way that you present results in a scientific paper, and I was unused to using multiple linear regression models. Thankfully, I had incredible bosses and coworkers at the lab that had tons of experience with this kind of analysis, and they helped me out. I learned so much about how to write results sections for different types of research. Our study yielded no significant results except for that relationship between isolation and memory, which was probably due to the fact that our population was subclinical for depression. This meant that no one in the study could be diagnosed with depression, and this was likely why their depressive symptoms didn't have an impact on their memory, or vice versa. I was so passionate about this project that writing the discussion, and talking about the future studies that could be conducted, was exciting. Now came the hard part, for me at least, presenting all of my research to the entire neuroscience major and faculty. I created a poster where my graphic design skills came in handy and got it printed. This is my poster. Yay, I'm almost done. I just need to add like some descriptions for like what these results graphs mean. And then I'm gonna submit it. Yippee, it's due tonight at midnight. It is currently like 5.30. So I've got like, you know, seven hours, but. You know, like when Papa Bomb, and how like Papa John, make a bitch go on and on. It's a feminine on and on. I have officially just submitted my thesis poster, which means I am officially totally done. <laughs> um, yeah. I did that. See, it says, oh no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be mirrored. I'm gonna have to mirror this. It says submitted, it says submitted. I submitted it. Yippee. Yippee. And that is my reaction to finishing my thesis. Yippee. <laughs> Literally with the current climate, that is the most emotion I can muster. 
or at least the most positive emotion <laughs> that I can muster. <sighs> Lovely. I picked up my poster on the day of the presentations and then just like my talk in November, it went totally fine because I loved my topic so much. It was actually incredibly rewarding to talk to neuroscience experts about my research and get their feedback. Many professors had insightful ideas about my research that I had never considered before. The next day, I did it. I finally submitted the final version of my thesis. It had been two years in the making, but somehow those two years went by incredibly fast. I had been expecting writing a thesis to be a painful, long process, but I actually enjoyed it a lot. Being able to research something I was deeply connected to is what I think made it so enjoyable for me. We had a toast, and then that was it. I was officially a person with a neuroscience degree. I've conducted a lot of scientific research before, but none so rewarding as my experience writing this thesis. I'm so, so thankful that I was able to do it, and even more thankful that I'm able to share my experience with all of you.